In this video, I'm gonna show you how I got over 20,000 Spotify streams in my new song, Life is Short, in about two weeks. So first of all, let me show you that I did in fact get 20,000 streams in my new song, Life is Short. So right now it's about 21,000 streams and it's a little over two weeks. So two weeks would have been the Friday and we have data all the way up to Sunday. So roughly 20,000 streams in roughly uh, two weeks. Forgive me if it's slightly under, but this is actually the second time that I've, I've done this. If I go to my song, uh, chains just real quick. I'll show you that uh, I can't really exactly show you but the song did pretty similarly That song did a little bit better um, For whatever reason, maybe the song is just inherently better. You tell me if you heard both um, This song did tw a little a little more in the two-week period and it's, it's done really well long term So just to kind of show you that it's not like a one-off fluke getting this kind of numbers um, anyways, let's just dive right in. So I'm going to show you how I made the entire campaign in Facebook ads for the song because I pretty much entirely used Facebook ads to promote this song. I'm going to show you how to make it from scratch and then I'm going to show you how I kind of optimize the campaign over time. So first of all, we are going to click the new campaign button. We're going to use conversions. We're going to click continue. So if you're not familiar with what a conversion is, it's, it's a lot different than, than a click. So a click is when someone actually just clicks the link in your ad, obviously, right? But a conversion is when someone lands on our page, and I'll show you the exact page I'm using. I think it's this one with a bunch of thousands of clicks. Um, they land on this page and then they click Spotify. Once they click Spotify, that's when the conversion actually occurs. And that is the difference. So a click is a lot less valuable than a conversion because a click could, it might not actually be the person, uh, one is real and two, they might never end up on your Spotify. Just, I have a whole video dedicated to that you can check out there. Um, but basically you're just gonna name your campaign. You're gonna turn on campaign budget optimization. Campaign budget optimization is a feature that lets Facebook optimize your campaign by distributing your budget across multiple different ad sets that you create. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that in a sec, but just turn it on. Just kind of blindly trust, blindly trust me for a moment um, and trust me that it's good to turn on in most cases. Next, you set your budget. Um, for this, I think I launched pretty hot. I think I launched at 45 a day. I've had songs where I launched in the past at 25 a day. I don't do it for the entire duration of the campaign. I do this kind of ramping thing where I start high and, and lower it just because Spotify seems to really care about the first few days and the first week more so than like the second month of a release. So I do this kind of ramping thing. Um, if you can only afford 10 bucks a day, that's good too. You know, whatever, whatever works for you. I'm just gonna type in 20, just arbitrarily. Now we're in the ad set. So the ad set is where you actually create your audience. The campaign, you define the objective and your budget and the ad set, you define your audience and where your ad's gonna run. So for your conversion event, now there's this whole thing with iOS 14, you might have heard me talk about in my channel, or if not, it's a whole thing. Now I do have a dedicated video for that as well. Um, I apologize that it's a lot harder to get into Facebook ads right now than it was six months ago. It's a lot harder, um, but it just is how it is. There's no way getting around that. Um, so check that video for more, but we're gonna choose hyped it click new, that just happens to be my conversion for hyped it. If you're using Tonden as your landing page, you're gonna be using view content. In this case, I'm using hyped it. Um, and I guess I'll link to another video there for how to set up the events. There's a lot of links in this video. Um, so you could set schedule your campaign ahead of time. Um, that's really up to you. But next we'll just get into the audience. Now, if you're getting this weird error up top, I've never talked about in this video because I just started getting this error recently turn off reach potential travelers and it goes away. I, I have no idea what that error is, but I'm not the only one getting it. And that's a, that's the fix I found online. So that, that really had me scratching my head for like three days, but you know, Facebook be Facebook. So next we, we choose our countries. Um, and there's a lot of different methods of how you're going to pick your countries. You can split things into tiers. You can target all Spotify countries. Don't just blindly copy every single Spotify country from Spotify's list. If you go to Google and type in Spotify countries, they just added a batch of countries a few months ago. Every time Spotify adds new countries, avoid the new countries. That seems to be what I've noticed. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into that. What I will show you is that the safest countries you could run to is tier one, but they're also the most expensive. And that's gonna be these countries. You can pause the video if you want to see the specific list of countries. And if you're willing to accept a little more risk, and I, I do recommend you accept a little more risk, you can widen it up to what I consider tier one and two. And this just includes more countries that are, are cheaper, um, but they also have a lower like lifetime value, so to speak. 
Um, so it's kind of a balance. You're, you want to go between countries that are cheap, um, have a good value, and also that are, are real people. <laughs> because certain countries are more likely to have bots than others. Um, for example, the US is very, very expensive, but customers can have a lifetime value there if you want to retarget to sell merch. And countries like Brazil and, and Mexico, um, still great music countries, um, but the average lifetime value of a customer based on their purchase habits is statistically lower than like the United States, UK, Canada, Germany, stuff like that. Um, nothing wrong with targeting though. I, Brazil, Mexico, and Russia, I think are my top three best performing in terms of cost countries. So keep that in mind. Um, anyways, next we'll go to age. This you wanna think about your target demographic and then widen it a little bit. So if your target demographic is like 18 to 34 roughly, or 18 to 30, you know, kind of like mine is, then you wanna widen it a little bit on either end, typically. And it's not like, this isn't super specific. You can fine tune this. Um, just do something like that and you'll be fine. <laughs> now, next for the targeting, this is something you might've seen in my other videos before, if you, but if you're new here, what I do is I target first by Spotify, just to give Facebook the best chance at starting with potential Spotify users. Um, it's not a perfectly accurate thing. You're not guaranteed that everyone in this audience is gonna have Spotify, but it helps you a little bit. Next, I'll click narrow audience. And this is where you really have to use your creativity. And this is where a lot of the testing comes in into these Facebook ads. So of course you can be like hip hop and that might be the best target for you, but it might be way better for you to target like g Easy <laughs> or someone or Eminem or something. You know, you never know. You really have to do your research here. I can't really answer it for you in a broad sense in a video. Um, you have to research your audience and really know what, what audience will work for you. This isn't necessarily who you sound like. This is which audience, if you were to target them, would have the highest likelihood of liking your music. So don't think about it who you sound like, think about it whose fans will like you. And that's the better way to think of it. Um, just because I use them in videos all the time, let's just do Linkin Park. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there's a lot of approaches here. You could add one artist, multiple artists, genres. Um, I'll show you what I did in my campaign. So just use one artist for now, and you can change it later. Now, I typically launch with detail targeting expansion on in most cases. It's not always the best option, but in most cases, I found leaving this on is the best choice that you can make. So I'll scroll down a bit. I don't use automatic placements anymore. Go down manual placements, turn off audience network, I turn off marketplace, right column, inbox, groups feed. These are image placements. That's weird for music. I turn off search, in article, both very weird placements for music. And definitely make sure absent sites is off, aka audience network. It's horrible. <laughs> and I have, um, I've talked about that before as well. But anyways, that's a whole ad set. Um, be diligent if you can about naming things. You know, so this would be like the name of your audience. This would be the name of your your song, Spotify, um, and then now we'll go into the ad. So now we're in the ad, and this is where I would say that you should, hey, look, my merch stuff is coming up, that's cool. <laughs> um, this is where you normally do a, a 15 second vertically sized ad um, of a different part of your song. So I might call this one verse one, and then I might go, I don't want to, I don't know, this is actually a new button, I don't think that's normally there. See, I've been doing this for quite a bit and I do Facebook ads a lot and every so often something surprises me. So for some reason they defaulted to some weird set of options um, and, and this is this happens every so often. So see here it defaulted to carousel, changed to single image or ad and that gives me where I actually need to be. I don't know why that happened. Of course it would happen when I'm shooting a video, right? Um, but this is what you should see. So if you're getting some weird thing, make sure it's on create ad, have dynamic off and single image or video and you'll, it'll be back here. Also make sure you choose your Facebook and Instagram accounts up at the top. So now I'm gonna just do ad media, ad video, and I'm gonna get a bunch of videos here that I've used in ads before. If you haven't uploaded anything, you'll just click upload and upload your video. I'll show you what type of thing that I use. This is verse one uh, Spotify. I'm gonna mute this, I already have it muted. Um, you're gonna see that it's a vertically sized video. I'm gonna click done. And now you're gonna notice the crop is messed up a little bit on here. And to fix that, you can just click. So the default, the actual video I made is this. It's a vertical size video that just says stream on Spotify and just me singing, lip syncing to the song and some artwork in the corner. Um, but vertically sized videos won't run on Instagram or Facebook. Um, so we're gonna click that little edit button and go to crop. I usually do four by five and I'll nudge it up a little bit because that looks a little better. 
Um, you can size this however you like. Just click apply and then it's gonna get to cropping. Now, the methodology that I use for the actual ads is that you should try to get like two or three ads. Now, this shouldn't be like the same part of the song and the same visual. Um, you can kind of do two approaches. You can either target um, the same style of visual, or let's say like lip syncing or recording to the part of the song for three different parts of the song, at least two, in the verse and chorus. The chorus isn't always the best performed part of the song. The other approach you could do is let's say you've pre-tested some ads or you know people reacted best to a part of the song in advertising before. You could test three different visual styles for the same part of the song. Technically, you can test, you could do like nine ads where you have like three different parts of the song across three different styles, but then you're going to spend a lot of money in testing. So it's kind of a balancing act to figure out what actually worked best. So our video just finished processing, so I can just click save. Um, and now you can see that I have a different, different looking ad on feeds as I do in stories and uh, in stream. So at this point, um, if I want to, if I scroll down here, we can go to website URL and you can just grab your, your link and copy it. I don't even know if that's the right one, but this is just a test. Put it there, change the call to action to listen now. And um, for the new iOS 14 stuff, make sure that your website shows up down here and website events is checked. If it doesn't show up there, again, check out this video on iOS 14. That's a whole, whole deep topic in itself that you have to do before you can actually make these conversion campaigns. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially the main campaign setup. Now, at this point, you would start like duplicating. You would quickly duplicate the actual ad itself, and you might make this one the chorus. Um, and then once you filled up all your ads, you would quickly duplicate the ad set. And then in here, this is kind of where some of the magic starts to happen, because in here, you might target Post Malone instead. And you would scroll down to your targeting, get rid of Linkin Park, add in Post Malone, and bam. Now you would continue to flesh that out. So now we're into the phase of where we're actually, I'm gonna show you my existing campaign and how I leveraged all these different decisions and to actually have a campaign that worked well. Now I just wanna take a minute before we dive into that to talk about the fact that I have, I have two different things to offer you. I have a course and I have consultations. Now of course, some people get great results with just my YouTube videos alone, but if you want more in-depth stuff, especially through all the iOS 14 stuff, but also through targeting options and have access to a community that can help you, there is a link to my course in the description. I think I can link to it up there, but I'm not sure. Um, check it out if it's for you. Feel free to try this stuff out with my YouTube videos. Watch the rest of my YouTube videos to see if you like what I have to offer. And if you like, join the course, totally up to you. And on the same note, if you're having trouble with this stuff and you're not a course type person, you could book a consultation below. Just be warned that my, my consultation calendar is very often completely booked out. So you might have to wait another day uh, to see when slots open up. But just wanted to push that out there because I get that question a lot. I don't like pushing my stuff too hard um, because I don't want to be spammy <laughs> with it, but I wanted to bring it up in the context of this video. So let's look back to Facebook ads. Now here, I'm gonna click the X and I'm not actually publishing this one because this is basically just an example of what my campaign was. So I'm just gonna click discard drafts. This is how you clear out all the draft stuff that you have. So don't actually do that because you'll turn off your thing. This is just for me. I just wanna teach you that for the future. Um, this is my actual campaign, Life is Short. It's been running for you know, like you know two weeks. It's gotten 3,400 conversions at an average cost of 21 cents per result. Not the best I've ever gotten, but definitely not the worst. 20 to 30 cents per conversion is kind of the good range. 10 to 20 cents is like great. Um, 30 plus is meh. And then like 40, 50 plus is like bad. Um, I would see your target should be 10 to 20 cents. Um, I'm working on getting this down, but on the other token, I'm also kind of putting a portion of my budget into higher priced countries. So I'm not super concerned with this price because of that decision. I spent $700 and <laughs> there's a lot of conversation that can come around with that. Is it worth it? Um, that's kind of a whole other topic. I mean, I, I've gotten 1.3 million streams on Spotify, um, and there's obviously the issue of return on investment, and it's really hard to figure out with streaming. Um, that's probably the topic for another video, so feel free to discuss it in the comments, but I'm probably gonna make another video about it because I've talked about it a lot. But anyways, you can spend whatever you want. Don't feel like you have to spend 700. $300 is a great budget for a campaign, and I've done it with a, my side project a lot, and. We have some songs in the hundreds of thousands or a couple songs over 100,000, I forget. But um, yeah, just to kind of give you kind of a perspective on that. So I'm gonna click on the name of the campaign to show you the ad sets in the campaign. And I'm gonna scroll over so you can see the results and the cost per result. So I have a few things. I have Linkin Park ad set. I have a Machine Gun Kelly ad set. 
And this is Machine Gun Kelly and Post Malone. Now ignore the extra text around this for now, at least. So I'm here, I'm targeting Lincoln Park, just like I showed you before, and here I'm targeting both Machine Gun Kelly and Post Malone. I should have split them up so that I could see which one was doing best, but I didn't. <laughs> and that was, I was just not thinking, I guess. Um, but you can see that each of these audiences costs differently. Lincoln Park costs 20 cents, Machine Gun Kelly Post Malone costs 22 cents. The reason why each one costs different comes down to a lot of factors. Competition is one factor, and it's really the main factor. The other one is how, well, actually not the main factor. The other factor is how good the audience responds to your, your music. So those are kind of the two drivers of cost. Now, those are what I launched with when I published the campaign. And then over time, I added a super narrow top tier audience. So this audience is targeting um, only top tier countries, the most expensive countries that I could target. Um, and it's super narrow. And I'll show you kind of what that targeting approach looked like because it's different. It's not just one artist. In this one, I'm doing like a bunch of artists. So I'm doing Spotify, narrowed by a bunch of artists, narrowed by a bunch of artists, narrowed by Linkin Park. Um, and it's still 65 million people. So I'm just, I'm just testing different things because you really never know what's gonna work. Um, and just to kind of show you how it's in here, you know, before I showed you having one artist in, but just like that, you can also have um, a couple artists. Like here, it's Post Malone or Machine Gun Kelly. Now, I added those two, and then I added this one, and at the same time, I added uh, this one. And this one is kind of a new thing I've been testing. Sometimes you can put nothing here, and it'll be your best performing audience. Right, so um, this is really just leveraging Facebook's machine learning algorithms to figure out what works best. You're targeting nothing, you're just targeting the country. So you're just kind of blindly poking in the countries, you're gonna get some data and Facebook's gonna figure out what type of human responds best to your ad. And you can see, <laughs> it's actually doing just as good as the targeting ones. So this isn't always the case, I will warn you, but it is something worth trying. And it's kind of surprising, but, um, it's worth trying, I think, because it's worked for me two times and it's failed for me roughly two times. So give it a shot. Now, I also added this risky $5 audience, which has got turned off. In this case, I'm targeting, I think, just India, Indonesia, and Ukraine, because in the past, these countries haven't converted for me as well as other countries, meaning they convert, but they don't listen on Spotify much. Um, so I, I consider them risky. Some people get really great results from India and Indonesia and Ukraine. For me in the past, they haven't, and sometimes they do, which is why I tested them in the first place. Um, now I also have this lookalike. Since this audience has gotten thousands of conversions, I made a lookalike audience off of it. It's not lowering the cost. Lookalikes can lower the cost of your audience, uh, or of your, of your campaign, but um, in this case, it's not. So I'm gonna do more testing into that. But that's the current state of the campaign. Now there is another depth of it. If I click on one of these, there's three ads. And for each one of these ad sets, you can go in and you can learn, well, last chorus is doing the cheapest, but verse one is doing better than the second half of verse one. Now I can go into a different one, look at the Machine Gun Kelly audience, and um, the cheapest one here is also last chorus. So in this case, the last chorus of the song is actually the best. But as I mentioned, that this is really not always true. Like this is actually rare. It's, I'd say roughly one third of the time, the chorus is the best performed part of my song. The other 66, 0.6666 repeating, <laughs> um, it's it's not. So just keep that in mind. So anyways, I realized there was a ton of information. I recommend maybe watching this video again when you have Facebook open next to it and try out some of this stuff. But if you need more help, I do have a whole playlist of Facebook ad advice for, for music artists right there. And then you can find out my course right there as well as in the description along with my consultation booking link as well. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more. I upload videos roughly twice a week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.